Hey everybody, JT Bear here on my incredibly creaky chair today. I've noticed I'm getting a lot of the same type questions, so since the changes to Google+, Plus, it's getting a little harder for me to respond to everybody individually, I figured what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw out a video with some of my frequently asked questions, and uh, I might even do update videos with uh, other questions from time to time as things continue. One thing I'm noticing people ask a lot is when they're starting up their systems, what type of uh, medium is the best, in my opinion, to use? Because, you know, you'll notice in my greenhouse I use pretty much everything, and in my comments and posts and such, I, I pretty much recommend using anything the roots can get around and water can flow around. But, that being said, when you first get started with aquaponics, I recommend getting something like these, uh, people call it, call it hydrotin, um, clay pellets, expanded clay, anything that's got um, basically a lot of holes running through it, um, it's going to have more surface area in total for the bacteria to develop on in the first place. So when you're first setting up your system, that's exactly what you're looking for in either a grow medium or a filtration system, is as much surface area as possible for those bacteria to develop on. That way they can convert those ammonias, they can help create the plant food that you want to make your aquaponic system beautiful because let's face it, at the end of the day, that's what we all want. We want a beautiful aquaponic garden that our friends and neighbors and loved ones can look at and go, wow, I can't believe you did this. Or maybe that's just me. Who knows? Something else that seems to come up a lot in people's comments and responses is the goldfish thing. Uh, a lot of people are of the opinion that to be a proper aquaponic system, you have to have edible fish in there. I disagree. I think um, to be a proper aquaponic system, you have to replace the chemicals of hydroponics with the natural waste produced by water life doesn't really kind of matter what it is, it doesn't have to be edible, it doesn't have to be decorative. I've seen systems that have uh, freshwater mussels in there and uh, they're filtering out the water just fine. I've seen systems that have crawfish in there or crawdads or whatever you want to call them. I've seen systems with shrimp, I've seen systems with tilapia. It, you know, it doesn't matter. It really, really doesn't matter. Um, what's important is that instead of using man-made synthetic chemicals, the fish are providing a natural solution for the natural bacteria to naturally produce the best plants possible in your growing environment. That is the point. And for the record, you know, if you really want to be pedantic about it, because some people just love to do that, goldfish are basically koi, are basically carp. If I really, really had to, it would be too much effort but I could eat them. Technically, they're edible fish. Not gonna happen though. Still, you know, you don't have to have edible fish. Um, so, a lot of people have asked me why it is that I have goldfish in my aquaponic system. Have I considered putting something in there a little bit more like tilapia, shrimp, you know, basically something that I can plate and feed the family with. And uh, there are a few reasons for that and they're really very simple. There's uh, nothing intensely complicated involved. First and foremost, where I live, it would be a massive amount of red tape and paperwork to be allowed to have edible fish in my backyard. You wouldn't even believe the uproar when you try and talk about raising chickens in town. They get very, very upset. So that's the, the primary reason. The secondary reason would be, well, temperature control. To illustrate why I don't keep edible fish such as tilapia, 34 degrees, that's 16 degrees of guaranteed death for tilapia. The vast majority of the edible fish that I would like to keep uh, basically require, you know, nothing colder than 50 degrees. Some of you may have seen the uh, video I made where I was testing my new temperature gun and uh, <laughs> it's just for those of you who haven't, there's about 15 to 20 degrees of death between where my water temperature is right now and where tilapia will go, uh, I don't know, I think I'm just going to drop dead right now. So that is another really big reason that goes along with it and you know, at the end of the day it kind of comes down to cost as well. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that I am trying to do this greenhouse aquaponic system basically on zero budget. I want to see how cheap it can be done and still be made to be successful. So in that situation, 
a 75 cent goldfish seems like a pretty reasonable option. So that's, you know, basically the long and short of why I have goldfish. Yes, I have considered edibles. No, I'm not doing them right now. Maybe in time. One thing that seems to come up rather a lot as well is the whole issue of what type of drain is best. Well, whatever drain you can make work is best. There are bell siphons, there are just standing drains, and you know, there's a whole lot more that you can go through. YouTube is full of incredibly brilliant people who have come up with simple solutions to drain your grow bed. So don't be afraid to look around. If uh, you know you don't like the look of one drain or you don't like the look of another drain, look at something else. What I have going in, in my garden here is I have two different types of, well, I guess counting the fish tank, I have three different types of drains in play right now. And uh, they're all really, really simple or else I would never have been able to make them work. First off, I've got the drain in my fish tank here, which basically operates like a straw. And uh, you know what, I'll just show you the drains as we go through it. Okay, so here in my fish tank, um, we have a really basic kind of a standpipe drain, except this works like a straw and draws things up from the bottom into the sump tank through that pipe there, where it can get filtered out later on. Because of the nature of water, when it gets to the same height that uh, the drain is, gravity does force it to suction up from the bottom, like I said, like a straw, brings the nasty stuff up, sends it out into the sump tank. Okay, that's a very, very basic drain. Works really well when you need to clean up the bottom of things, okay? Just don't put a cap on it, because if you do, it'll drain it completely. The next type of drain we have under Miles, the turtle mascot here. This is your standard bell siphon. So what's gonna happen here is the bed will fill up. It'll get to the top. It'll eventually overflow. As you can see, this bed fills fairly quickly. Now, if I left it without the bell, it would just be a constant height. And most of these plants would be fine with that. A couple of them would object, but whatever. But because of the bell on there, and you'll notice I went the uh, lazy slash energy efficient route here. I don't have a hose sticking out of the top to cut it off. I have uh, made this work, but I think if I was to build it again, I would probably take the extra 10, 20 seconds, you know, maybe 25 cents, and uh, put that in there. Anywho, now that this is filled back up, when we put the bell on it, as it overflows, it creates a nice steady stream down here. It does a great job of oxygenating the sump tank and the overall water in general, therefore. But it just drains that bed out really, really quickly. <laughs> it's so cold in here, my breath looks like smoke. Anyway, it just drains that bed out really, really quickly. And uh, the roots have a nice dry period that they can you know, suck up some extra oxygen or just not be flooded for a minute. The other type of drain that I employ in my grow beds is just a standard standpipe. The water level reaches a point where I would like it to uh, end. The standpipe is cut to that height. Water overflows back into the fish tank. And both of my standpipes are set up with an extra T so that as the water comes through here and gets forced down, it kind of bounces around, it's going to pull in some extra air take it down with it. Works better when there's more water moving through it, but even at the slow rate these are going at this winter, that's working pretty good. Well there you go, in a nutshell, some basic uh, question and answers about my greenhouse system, about what's going on with the aquaponics, about why I've got the goldfish, about why you should invest in the clay pebbles or some expanded uh, shale basically anything with lots and lots and lots of surface area for the bacteria when you're first starting out your aquaponic system and you're looking for a filtration medium. Uh, covered drains, 
So I don't know, I probably missed a lot of people's questions and if I did just feel free to throw them down in the comments down there. If you want to see uh, when the next question and answer video gets posted up, make sure you subscribe at the end of this. And otherwise, thanks for watching, happy harvests and have yourselves a great day. I can't win. First it's traffic, now it's sirens. Neighborhood dogs. Can't the guy just make a video about some damn bitch?